live in the dungeon. This is the Dream Warrior Review. I'm Kurt Thomas. I'm Nick Strawn. The Martians kidnap uh, Santa Claus because there is nobody on Mars to give the children presents. Well, Which is a very dis- good description. That, that's and that's pretty much good, all you need to know. Pretty much all you need. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You did you did that twice exactly like, exactly like I know my lines. You know who you sounded like? Who? You. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> this is a little gem from nineteen sixty four that's in public domain and it's directed by Nicholas Web- Webster. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's um <laughs> You, you I don't know, want to talk like that. Yeah, it, it, I'm trying to sound like one of the Martians. It, yeah, it's in really bad color. Yes. I mean, the, oh er, er, every print that's out there is just absolutely, uh, the quality is just horrendous. Um, the really stupid plot, uh, special effects are very simple. Yes. The acting's very simple. The Act- costumes are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I like the tube from the, the furnace or the... Yes, yes. The, the water heater. Right. Yeah, the water heater. I was going to mention that. <laughs> that. Yeah, like their hats literally have a three-quarter inch water heater, yeah. copper water heater tube. That goes, <laughs> and then the it's a antennas. specific part, you know? You look at it and you go... Yeah, very specific. Yeah, very yeah, the, specific. The antennas look like scissors. Like and the, you know what? You know what I mean? The scissors. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> So here's the thing. It's funny that you brought that up because I was going to bring up that copper tube and I was going to tell you, this is, this is We're already a doing a story time? We're doing a story time. All right? We went right into it. Story time. Story time. It's story time with Mick. 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 Okay. Wow. There's this, the sets in this are the classic, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the classic future, futuristic, you know, we got to think of what Mars is like. Right. We have to think of it. And, and, and in that, there are some rules if you're the production designer. Um, the first rule is this, is you can't recognize the stuff. I mean, you, you're, you're looking at the walls, and, and basically it kind of goes like this. You... you you build your walls and platforms and your desks and stuff like that. And then you start to cluge it. Mm-hmm. And the cluging is like all the, um, like, I'm going to give you the classic cluge is putting the rivets around the door, right? You right. know, yeah. so that so that it look, looks like a submarine. And by the way, I can't understand, but there were rivets all over the place <laughs> on these sets. And I'm not, I'm a, almost 100% sure that you wouldn't need rivets on a spaceship. Probably not. Um, but, you know, so be it, especially three-quarter inch huge ones. So the thing is, is what you're trying to do is you're trying to use things that shapes that we don't recognize um, and, and shapes that are cheap enough. <laughs> so we used to use vacuum form and we would vacuum form shapes and, or um, or here's the other thing. This is, <laughs> we would go and we would buy stuff uh, off of a, a TRW or Rockwell or uh, any any of the uh, local uh, aerospace companies mm-hmm. would have, uh, they would have uh, um, auctions. Oh, okay. And they would take all their like space looking stuff right. that they didn't need anymore and they would they would put them out in this they had this enormous building that had like they looked like little parking lots. And they would just put stuff on these lots and then there'd be a number on it and then you'd go up and you'd just bid on it, hmm. right? And and the bidding would st- Started like basically nothing, and you would bid against you know everybody else that, that was uh, from the film business, <laughs> and, and it was funny. And, and we would get bids all the time, you know, get get lots and and and, and get like because there was that there was a place called uh, Joe Factors in town that specifically dealt with um, uh, aircraft uh, hmm. aircraft salvage. You know, and, and a lot of aerospace salvage, and and like you you would get uh, pipes that would have like this incredible purple anodizing, mm-hmm. or like this glowing gr- bright green anodizing. You know, and and, and all this stuff with or these like you know, uh, 
little blocks of uh, like aluminum that had been carved in every way you could possibly imagine with drills and stuff like that. So that, you know, you, you didn't know what they were, <laughs> but but they looked really cool. Right. And that's, that was your definition of how you built the set, you know, because you were putting all this stuff on. There was this guy. And I'm going to tell you there was a guy. Okay. <laughs> there was this guy that was, um, I mean, he was pretty amazing. He was. He called himself the Plastics Man. And it wasn't the, Plastic Man. It was the Plastics Man. The Plastics Man. man. Okay. Right. The There's Plastics a difference. Man. There, there is a difference. And what the Plastics Man would do, because he came, he went from stage to stage to stage across town. And, and once he had, like, hit all the construction sites for for uh, shows and, and stages, and, then he'd go back and he'd start again, right? And, and, and basically, this is what he did for life. And he had all these catalogs of... Uh, and and all these pictures of stuff that he had in a warehouse of of stuff that he picked that didn't look like anything else hmm. right you know uh, <laughs> wow. and most of it was like plastic tubing extrusions you know ribbed edges or or just uh uh you know if i could if i could describe it uh he wouldn't have it it was stuff that you couldn't describe it was like weird right, yeah. weird stuff that you would paint up but here's the thing that was amazing about this guy is first of all he was right dead topped off at five feet you know he was like super short and 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 he was like you know all energy right hi i am plastic man and he would show up and he would do the plastic man rap <laughs> wow. he would have this like he would come in with this uh this player you know a boom box and he'd set the boom box box down and like everybody would come all the carpenters all the special effects guys all the everybody would come in to, to, to watch him do and and he'd do this like and and it was not good at all i mean not at all <laughs> right. but but boy, he sure put a lot of energy into it, and, and it was very, very, very white, you know. And I did he rhyme? And, yo, yeah, really badly. <laughs> I mean, it were really, really strong rhymes, really um, nursery school kind of stuff. Maybe and uh, and he would do lamb, his rap, lamb, and it was lamb, hilarious. It was, lamb, it was, it was white as what snow, you white, really white. needed to see, and it's what he. Um, Wow, <laughs> and and he would sell hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, worth. Of, he'd he'd sell like you know odd looking plastic balls. Come see my balls. You know, that had like weird ribs and stuff on them and stuff. And he had pictures of all this stuff that he had in this warehouse. And and he'd just make the circle. And and literally through the eighties and I'm most of the nineties, I saw this guy all the time. Literally all the time. I'd see him probably two three times a year. You know, it, I just happened to be around when he'd be making his uh, his pass through at some point. And uh, <laughs> I, I just I got to tell you, if if I ever got a chance to see to uh, find out who he is, you know, I it, it, if if he's not alive anymore, I'd like I, I would love to uh, find, you know, his progeny and just say you know the guy, the guy was such a trip right. you know he was he was amazing you know um yeah 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 hmm. i figure tazzle barrow out there somewhere knows where it is anyway where he is anyway he's probably listening right now yeah, yeah well these guys are great <laughs> yeah one of the seven <laughs> i don't know so anyway this the this set the sets I kind of like the sets because they just had this really funky 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 look to them. I like the airlock. <laughs> y you know they were. Um, it was two do double doors. I remember from my high school. <laughs> <laughs> they they had this Futurama kind of effect to yeah, them, yeah. and and uh, and they were really small. I mean the sets on this yeah, thing. Oh, totally. oh, this thing. Yeah. This literally the dungeon in here. We could have set up all the sets <laughs> right. that were in that film. Actually, our control panel looks a lot like the one. That a Santa lot was like that, in. you know, yeah. like the big, like the big dials, the yeah. one that Santa was sitting next. To. Yeah. With and I got to tell you something. Green tubes in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, from the way the camera was sitting, there was not a fourth wall on any of those sets. 
So I could just imagine that it was done. I mean, they weren't very tall. Uh, there was a certain claustrophobic feel to it. I kept thinking, thinking to myself, you know, I, was, I, I do this a lot as I put in my mind, I try and think of uh, how big of a space the set is sitting in. Mm-hmm. And all I could think of is like these sets were sitting in a really, really small, small warehouse somewhere. You know, and um, and there was a lot of room around them. Maybe that's some amazing tiny. actors like Dro- the guy that played Dropo. Dropo. Yeah, boy, oh, was oh, it? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I can't remember what he said, but it was. You know what the funny the funny thing about it is is every once in a while you get a film. See this. I'm trying to think of a Dropo line. <laughs> this to me is kind of a funnier version. Santa Claus is gone and the children are gone too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I got one. Sorry. Anyway. I know there's probably this, a better one. This has that that weird that weird charm of. Uh, it was so bad, it was good. Yeah, it was so bad, it was good. Yeah, and it's you know? it's like I wanted to like really hate this one, but it was awesome. I, I was entertained by it, so who cares if it was good? <laughs> yeah, no, it is it is entertaining. Uh, but I was like, if you don't take it seriously, I mean, yeah. if somebody watches this, try to analyze it, they'd be like, <laughs> the first five minutes would be like pissed off. Well, and they and they do. It, a lot of it was shot very much like a play, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, it, it's they didn't. They the didn't, guy that played Santa was perfect. Yeah. Oh, oh. and Santa was perfect. And I don't have my notes about the trivia that I found, but anyway. Oh, I you, did find out that this was one of the first. They they think this is one of the first times they whoever they are. Yeah. Uh, it's thought that this is one of the first times that Mrs. Claus was on film. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, 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 did did you catch the polar bear? <laughs> I like the polar bear. Oh, the guy bear. in the suit. Yeah, the guy in the suit. Yeah, oh yeah. my gosh, the polar bear was. That was uh, awesome. That was hilarious. And at one point, uh, oh, here you go. Here's your answer. It was most of it was shot in an abandoned aircraft hangar in Long Beach Island, New York. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, they misspelled costume designer at the opening credits with C U S T U M E custom. Yeah, I oh, I gotta tell you, there was the scene where everybody was laughing. Yeah, uh, I at the end of that, I went back and du- and and double timed because it went on forever, <laughs> and I double timed it and listened to it, and it was hilarious. Right. It was double time. It was hilarious. <laughs> actually, this whole movie double time would be funny. Well, I watched. I actually watched the rest of the film then from then on <laughs> just in double time. Oh, um, so I don't know what Whammo air blasters are, but that was what all the guys oh, were. Oh, oh. Whammo air blasters. Yeah, look up a Whammo air blaster. That's exactly what they were. And and, and I told my wife, I said, I said, hey, hun, I swear these are wh- Whammo Whammo air blasters, and and she had no idea who I was talking about. Uh, oh, you right there. Look, oh yeah, look. yeah. See, yeah. see, I had one of those. Those were great. They were a lot of fun. Did they make a noise. Uh, they would made a noise, but they actually. You know, push out a little ball of air. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> you, you know, it, it would uh, knock down, uh, you know, a, a paper cup, you know, from across <laughs> the table. <laughs> they weren't very powerful, but... Uh, it's funny you said this was like like a play because most of the crew came from Broadway shows. Wow, there you go. It's exactly. Um, but I love the panel that, uh, uh, that Santa is sitting in front of. <laughs> that vintage dials and stuff wouldn't you love to have that yeah that control absolutely panel now oh yeah. my gosh the, i like the, well the a lot of the movies factory. from the 50s and 60s i really want some of the equipment because it's like oh, a lot of it's old broadcasting equipment right like old you know right. old tubes and yeah, stuff tubes you and clean like them up and they're monitors amazing. and stuff yeah. Yeah, they have amazing yeah. tone to them i yeah. like how the, some of the footage they use the stock footage they use yeah <laughs> that they, did. In there. <laughs> they did yeah they should I, I i noted that they they had uh all kinds of norad yeah. and b-52s and and all these great uh, the huge you know, computer room too yeah, that was a great oh shot. yeah it's just some <laughs> great stuff Best worst robot ever. <laughs> right. I mean, honestly, the the best worst robot ever. It just, oh, man. Uh, well, my favorite part was when Droppo dresses like Santa Claus. And the other Martians don't notice that it's it's Droppo. Right, right, right. <laughs> that, that he's still got that pipe coming out right. of his head for one thing. His hat. He had his yeah. hat. Both hats on. Right. <laughs> yeah. helmet but, in his but, hat. But, but, but st- still, still the pipe was there that comes around. And he was actually like Droppo. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking like Droppo. <laughs> and yet, yeah, well. Ho, ho, ho. So, <laughs> anyway. So, if, if we go with the 2.5 being like the direct middle, um, I would have, I, I just wish that there was a, 
a cleaner copy of this out somewhere because all these copies are just terrible. Yeah. Um, uh, There's tons of copies out there, apparently. Yeah, I, w- I would have to give it maybe a, a three, I think, you know, because I I enjoyed the living hell out of it. You <laughs> yeah. know, it was really kind of funny. I have to agree, actually, pretty much all the way three. Yeah, 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 and because and, and, it's above average, and I would, <laughs> I would love to see a good copy of it. As a movie, it's below average, but as a as entertainment, it's above average. Talk about uh, restoring a film, uh, Peter Jackson. Oh yeah, I think he told me about this. Yeah, Peter Jackson is, it, is is redoing. I know that I I heard that he was redoing four films, but I know for sure Bad Taste is that, that one well he's yeah. doing Bad Taste and Meet the Feebles and uh, Dead Alive. So the, <laughs> I mean, he he's That's not re, and he's not redoing reshooting them yeah, or anything yeah. like that. He's just going to go in and clean them, clean up them up because all of them are especially Meet the Feebles. He's not going to do a George Lucas thing and have like. Job of the Hut walking around. Oh, he is. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> he is Actually, good. he should he have Job of the Hut. Yeah, I mean, like, come literally. on, right? Who wouldn't? He, if you could, he's got wetter right there. Right. <laughs> yeah, come on. You know, you know, he's gonna do that. Actually, it I want to see. Uh, it, I'd like to see like a uh, either a puppet or yeah, maybe stop motion version of uh, Mortal Engines <laughs> or like or like Thunderbirds. Yeah, yeah. Thunderbirds, Thunderbirds version. Oh, Thunderbirds. <laughs> Oh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, right. yeah. That would yeah. be a lot of work. Oh, my gosh. Oh, can't even imagine how hard that'd be. It would be awesome, though. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I think that's it. We killed it. Yes. Done. Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us on the Dream Warrior Review Podcast. Don't forget to tell your friends about us, follow us, and of course, like us. We can be found on Podbean, which is an amazing app, YouTube, Stitcher, Alexa on any pod, iTunes, Google Play, we're on Twitter as well, at DW Review, and of course, Facebook. You can find us there. You can also email us at dreamwarriorreview at gmail.com.